Welcome to our podcast today. Today, I'm Dr. Paul Beckham, and I have with me Dr. Victoria Lau and Dr. Carly Dropic. Uh, and today's topic is going to be on diabetes. Who wants some yes. sugar? No. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today. So, I mean, I think a big thing is that uh, a lot of people have misconceptions about diabetes. I used to have a staff member. She said their grandmother used to always call it sugar diabetes. <laughs> and uh, that probably is a good term for type 2 diabetes because usually it's those types of patients that they've, you know, just developed a very insensitivity. You know, their pancreas just isn't responding well uh, to sugar in their system because they've overloaded their body with way too many carbohydrates and they're just not able to uh, respond well when they do eat meals that are higher in carbohydrates, especially simple uh, carbohydrates like sugar, candies, the kind of stuff there. Whereas type 1 diabetes, now you're looking at something where, uh, and it's what my wife has, it, it, somebody could have an autoimmune disease or it could be a hereditary thing where their pancreatic eye cells uh, just don't produce insulin or with an autoimmune type disease, your body's attacked those cells and they just no longer work and they're causing problems in that you just can't maintain your body's uh, blood sugar. And then you're going to have to be on uh, insulin to help control your blood sugar. Because insulin is what? That does what? <laughs> so insulin, insulin, you want me to go over that? Insulin yeah, is a hormone that is produced by your pancreas, just like you have sex, horm sex hormones that are produced by your gonads or thyroid hormone uh, produced by your thyroid, uh, cortisol produced by your adrenal glands on your kidneys. And when basically you don't have that hormone present, that helps to control your body's blood sugars, your blood sugars are gonna spike and people get really wacky symptoms and they're gonna have really weird things leading up to even being diagnosed, uh, especially with type one diabetes. My wife got it at age 46. Uh, she started drinking gallons of water a day, probably her body's natural response to try and help drive down her blood sugar. Cause I think the first day that she went in and got it tested after we're like, there's something not right. Her blood sugars were in the five hundreds and that's just not good. No, that's a little high. <laughs> yeah. And I'll have patients come in the office now and and more of the probably, I would say the previous better measurement uh, was A1C and they'll come in with A1Cs in the teens. I think uh, one lady came in, she's like, well, I feel best when mine's in the teens. No. <laughs> I think my wife even used to say that for a while until she realized she really didn't feel good once she did get it back down under control, got her blood sugars down into the, you know, hundreds again, rather than, oh, I feel better when my blood sugar is up around 200. Well, that's not very healthy for you because, you know, really the biggest culprit in, in a lot of diseases, it's not you know, even cardiac disease. People have been, you know, they've demonized uh, cholesterol and yes, you don't want to get a lot of saturated uh, fats in your diet and have a lot of LDL or VLDL cholesterols in your diet because uh, those will cause problems, but you do need to have cholesterol uh, in your diet because that's what can help form all your hormones. And, you know, you need to have even all the amino acids again uh, to form those hormones as well. And especially, you know, even looking at uh, like type 1 diabetes where somebody's had an autoimmune condition, you know, they've maybe had some changes in their diet or stresses, could be a viral infection, could be, you know, who knows what has caused this attack on the pancreatic eye cells and, you know, caused them to have type one diabetes. Again, if it's hereditary, it's a little bit different, you know, then you're going to get it in kids that are usually probably not around until about eight, you know, maybe 10, 12, they're going to notice it in school where they're just having issues and end up, you know, having to get, now they'll put them on an insulin pump and have to inject themselves. They might have to right away, but you know, diabetes is something where you, you got to make sure you keep your sugars under control because it's going to cause a whole host of other health problems here. And if you're not literally 
keeping your blood sugars in check, it's going to take you twice as long to heal from anything. Even coming into the office here, if you're having chiropractic treatments or some regenerative treatments, or even if we're trying to deal with things with functional medicine, you know, diabetes is going to take a little bit longer to heal things up here because, you know, of your body just trying to regulate that blood sugar, whether it's with insulin for type one, or if you're on, you know, medications, you're trying to control it naturally with, I have patients that are using berberine, uh, which is just kind of a, a natural supplement that can help uh, keep blood sugar in check. You know, if, and a lot of them are doing really good with it. They don't even have to, you know, look at taking other medications to deal with it. But mm-hmm. now we definitely see how you mentioned, yeah, they might take longer to heal. And, you know, that's, yes, diabetes in general will help, will do that or might cause your body to take longer to heal. But, we all we always forget that we have to think about the years of wear and tear on our body too and Mm -hmm. i think i think that's one thing that we strive to focus on at the office is you know showing people that you come in today with this back pain but did it start yesterday or how many times has this occurred you know did you feel this way back when did you have significant injuries and that's you know our biggest you know, striving aspect is that we want to really dig deep and find that root cause Mm -hmm. and then definitely promote that. Okay. This might take longer than you anticipate, but you had this and this going on prior and this and this that has led up to this and we'll show you that and we'll tell you that and make sure we walk you through exactly what your treatment plan would look like too. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of factors that go into, you know, developing a treatment plan and factors like diabetes can, you know, double that length of treatment here. Uh, past injuries that weren't taken care of properly might even, you know, be a one and a half to two times factor here uh, in, in getting anything treated in the office. So, you know, diabetes is a, it's a chronic condition. It's definitely something that does lend itself well to doing, you know, more functional medicine uh, types of correction. So a lot of that is dietary in nature. And then that also can be helpful with, you know, other conditions that are getting treated, whether it be musculoskeletal conditions, you know, diabetes can cause, you know, heart issues, you know, cardiac issues here, if you're not keeping those blood sugars under control. And I think the biggest thing that we really see in the office is neuropathy and the majority of people coming in, not all of them, are people that do have uh, usually type two diabetes and they're starting to get, you know, numb, tingly, usually feet is where it starts out at. And once it starts to get a bit worse, then it starts to affect their hands. And, you know, the more that, uh, we evaluate people here and we can give them a pretty good picture of what it's going to take to, you know, help treat their, uh, neuropathy. And then a big portion of that plan is to make sure that you're keeping your blood sugars under control and even just long term, because if you don't keep your blood sugars under control, you know, the chances of that neuropathy coming back are sig- significant because the sugars just get in the blood. And then that's what really starts to affect then the nerves because the blood flow gets cut off to your feet. Your feet start to turn purple and all that kind of stuff. We, sh- we shouldn't see purple toes in the office here. Uh, but a lot of times that's, you know, where people are coming in gets worse Then you, you know, might not be feeling things. You get little nicks and cuts on your feet. And then next thing you know, you got an ulcer and, you know, you're having to have, you know, some limbs amputated, uh, just because, you know, your body can't respond well because you don't have the proper blood flow there. The nerves even died off and you don't feel anything. So you need to be checking your feet consistently every single day. If you have neuropathy going on because you don't even know what you don't feel. And then that, especially if you have diabetes on top of it, you're going to have poor circulation and the chance of getting some ulcers and then those getting infected are even higher yet. So being very diligent and taking care of your feet on a daily basis can be a huge, huge help for people that do have diabetes, whether you have neuropathy or not. Absolutely. You know, I, I think about it and I know tons of people with diabetes, whether it's type one or type two, both my maternal grandparents had it and it caused that cascade reaction. You know, that's what we really want to let you know is that 
one thing can lead to the next if not taken care of properly. And I saw my grandparents, you know, diabetes. Oh, and then we have coronary heart. And then let's add in vision issues. And it's just that, Mm -hmm. again, that cascade reaction. If we don't do something now, you know, what's that going to look like in 10 years from now? You know, say, say you're on the verge of retirement and you have all this, these issues and you don't do something now, well, you're retired. You got all these things you want to do. You want to venture off, but now Mm -hmm. you're sick and you haven't taken care of it. And we just, we really want to stress the fact that you have one life to live and you need to be healthy to do that. (laughs) And our goal is to help you find the best possible options for that. Um, I, I, yeah, yeah. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> I mean, our goal here is to try and help increase your health span so that it matches your lifespan. And, and that would mean that we want to make sure that you live a healthy life, you know, all the way up to the time, you know, hopefully you reach, you know, 120 years old, you fall asleep one night and you just don't wake up the next day. But unfortunately, in the United States here, you know, a vast majority of people, I want to say it's in the 70 some percentile range, uh, have the last decade of their life where they're dealing with a disability. You know, and it's something that's even really stretches back. I mean, and a disability to the point where they need to have somebody help them. You know, they've typically spent about the last 17 years of their life with this disability. They've been able to manage it themselves for a while, but then it just gets to a point because they haven't been proactive in dealing with their health and they've had things like diabetes affect them. So that's decreasing your health span to the point where you have, you know, a big disability span now that you're having to have help from other people. And the more you can pay attention to your health and make sure that you're staying healthy as long as possible, you know, the less chance you're going to need to have help from other people. And, And nobody really wants to have, you know, that happen. But I think, kind of adding on to even what Victoria was saying, as people get older, you know, one of the things that they're actually starting to call diabetes type three now is Alzheimer's and dementia, because you're just getting too much sugar up in the brain. And then that's causing problems there as well. So uh, that's kind of a new label that's come out within the last few years here now. And it's, it's kind of holding true. It's usually having to deal with blood sugar levels in the body. So keeping those under control is super helpful. Mm -hmm. So of course being proactive and, you know, we always look at all those lifestyle adjustments that you can do. You know, we always discuss sleep and getting, you know, a good recommended seven to nine hours sleep. Um, But then exercising, you know, some people can Mm -hmm. actually reverse that type two diabetes or that pre-diabetic nature by doing the right diet, nutrition, and exercise and seeing that shift and looking at other things, you know, your stress levels, how is that affecting you? You know, when you tend to stress, what? You tend to not eat healthy. You tend to go on the fly of the seat of your pants sort of thing. Like, okay, I need to eat something. Let's, let's go to the nearest drive-through and get it. (laughs) And this is looking at the whole globe of nature and your surroundings and how it's affecting you, but how you can, uh, Take control and do it, do do what you need to do for you. And, you know, there's some things, yes, we do have at the office that can be beneficial for care. Uh, We talked about functional medicine, uh, but we also have uh, PEMF. Um, Mm -hmm. We actually had a recent patient that came in with quite a few ulcers on her legs and we incorporated PEMF and laser in. Wow. We saw a drastic change in, you know, the size of the ulcers, the open wounds to decreasing in size, nature is just amazing to see Mm -hmm. the the right tools. I think one other tool that people even might want to look at, I mean, not that we have in the office, I mean, there's, you know, the laser and the shockwave are awesome at at helping heal that up. And in fact, that's why the PEMF therapy was designed in the first place was to help uh, heal up uh, areas where you have decreased blood flow and diabetic ulcers was the number one thing that they used it with. But something so that people can kind of monitor themselves and you can either, you know, if, if you have type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes, uh, like my wife, she's got a continuous blood glucose monitor is an awesome thing to have. I think some people, if you're really into it and you want to know where that's at yourself, you're maybe into some sports or, hey, you just want to make sure you keep your blood sugars under control is 
getting those continuous blood glucose monitors and then even watching how the foods that you're eating are affecting your blood sugar levels. Because again, you know, the, the tighter you can keep uh, that blood sugar, they're going to spike out. I mean, you're going to eat a meal and you're going to see it, you know, go and spike out up, you know, probably around 180, 200, might go higher depending on what you're eating. But you want to see within a couple hours after that, usually within two hours, that blood sugar level comes back down into the 140, 150 range there. And then hopefully drops back down underneath 120 and hopefully you keep it underneath that. And, and when you're waking up in the morning, it definitely should be underneath 100, uh, probably closer to 80 if at all possible. So that's where you're supposed to have breakfast because it's breaking your fast. You shouldn't be eating uh, later at night. Uh, you should be trying to cut that off probably within a, a minimum of two hours before you go to bed, probably you, even sooner you if you're really that? having issues. Can you repeat that for my husband who, you know how that goes. Where <laughs> Snacks your all the way loved, up to bedtime. Your loved ones don't want to heed your advice as a medical <laughs> or healthcare professional. <laughs> I'll make yeah, sure I he mean, watches this video. <laughs> But I think the biggest thing that people just need to realize is that you don't want to have your body trying to digest food while you're sleeping at night. It needs to rest. So there's rest and digest. I mean, yes, you should be resting, but you should also give yourself at least a couple hours. I mean, if you eat a bigger meal, you might need to have that three or four hours before you even go to bed because you want to make sure when you go to bed, all that food is out of your stomach. It's maybe in your intestinal tract but it's not still in your stomach because you might wake up in the morning and have heartburn or digestion. I mean, that's where a lot of people just run into problems and they run to medications again, that just cover up the symptoms and they're not taking care of the real issue. But I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but <laughs> all of that, you know, that correlates too. you know, we're living in this fast paced world. You know, our kids are doing all these sports, all these activities and what's happening. You know, we're, we're starting to, snack, 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 go to our sport, come home, cook a meal late at night. I've, I've already noticed it, you know, in our household with what's going on. And I'm like, you know, no wonder, you know, we're starting to see increase in diabetes or pre-diabetes in this world. It starts mm -hmm. young and it's what what's we all the processed now. foods too. So, mm -hmm. oh yeah, that too, mm -hmm. you know, when in doubt, grab some fruit and veggies and uh, that's that's a good snack. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and we already talked about this, but you know, just reiterating, you know, if we can help you in any way with diabetes, you know, whether it's you have an ulcer and we need to look at that, or do some hormonal testing, we always want to focus on increasing that health span. And I know Dr. Beckham has mm -hmm. mentioned that a few times, but your health span to meet your lifespan. And, okay. Uh, and with that, I want to mention that coming up in November is Diabetes Awareness Month. So it's a good time to why we talked about it here today. And I think there's even a special day on November 14th, so mark your calendars. So just bring awareness and more education towards diabetes and how you can how people can be helped in treatments and like this mm -hmm. treatments in the office that we can offer. So absolutely. yeah, I think a lot of the natural solutions people just aren't aware of because they're so aware of the the medical end of the spectrum here, and especially in type two, that doesn't really need to be the case. Type one, yes, you're going to have to have insulin there, but type two, there's a lot of things we can do naturally that could help out people a lot. So yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, you know, just contact the office. You know, we even have different diets. Not everybody needs to be on the same diet, but we can actually make sure that we get you one that is actually fitting to your situation. We do have questionnaires and we can sit down and have a consultation to make sure that it would be something that would be fitting to you. So, mm -hmm. so when in doubt, contact our office. And if we don't have the answer, we will certainly lead you in the best direction to get you the answers you need. Okay. Thanks for uh, watching and listening. And we'll be back at you next week here with our next episode. Awesome. Have a good day.